Hello, everyone. You, too, can have a podcast. You have a passionate voice. You want to be heard. You can be inspiration to others. And it is super easy. You all know that I am not technical. So just download the Anchor app on your phone or go to anchor.fm and get started sharing your voice and inspiring the world. Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. So how many of you out there struggle with managing your emotions? I should, if I was romper room and I've got the little, you know, mirror in my hand, I should be, some of you may not even know what romper room is. It was a little kids program where at the very end they would have a mirror that was basically a hand with a circle, but there was no mirror in it. It was completely blank in the middle. And the person would look through it to the TV and they'd say, I see Bobby and Mary and Julie. And I can't tell you how many years I waited for that person to say Kendra and it never came. (laughs) Kendra was not a common name when I was a kid. I was looking for it on my license plates for my bikes. I wanted it on my pencils and nope, never ever. Kendall was always out there, but never Kendra. Okay, I digress. So when I ask the question, how many of you struggle with managing your emotions? I imagined me looking through that little mirror and all of you raising your hands. I see you and you and you because it's hard. But let me just say it's so important for us to practice it because the minute that we realize that the emotions that are coming up inside us are not God's spirit, that is when we need to take some action. So what are the gifts, well, really fruits of the Holy Spirit? Because gifts are different. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, this is really a fact, you will be filled with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And if you think of anyone that you know who is a holy, holy person, and when I say holy, I mean is all of these things and prayerful and always reaches out to help. I mean, I know people like lay people and I know priests like this, my own spiritual director, my neighbor my neighbor's mom, actually, when I grew up, I used to tell, ask her, is your mom really like that all the time? And she's like, yeah, I mean, just sweet to a disgusting level for me at that time in my life. <laughs> I mean, I was a punk kid, right? Amazing how sweet she was. My mom wasn't like that at all. I thought it was a total act. But you can tell people who are filled with these beautiful characteristics of the spirit. And it all goes back to whether or not you are a prayerful person, 
whether or not you talk to God all day, whether or not you humble yourself and offer your heart to him and pay stinking attention to what's going on in your life during that day. I really want to stress that half the time emotions have something to do with what we're reflecting on in the past or what we're thinking about in the future. And emotions can also come to us through things like, obviously, TV or what we read, what we listen to, right? What we experience with friends and family, just conversations and interaction. So the moment that you get angry or the moment that you get upset, like right now, let's just take the example of guns, I'm saying that because we just, you know, we just had a shooting and then there was another shooting. And I think I mentioned to you a friend of mine who was out on Facebook saying, here we go again. And, and being emotional about it, being played really. So I'd like us to at least look at what's going on in the world and know that we are being played like a fiddle sometimes. Sometimes we get angry, sometimes we get upset, sometimes we get, you know, emotional, like with guns. We don't like to see kids getting shot up in a school. There's nobody out there that says, oh yeah, let's go, and has no emotion. Well, most people should have emotion about that. But then you have to take your emotion back and look at the facts and start assessing why, remember, why. The who, what, where, when, why, but start with why. Why did this happen? What happened? Who did it? How did it happen? And then, like, look at what's happening afterwards. So if we can remember to take the lens of God and say, okay, we should be feeling, in this case, we should be feeling love for these people, right? Oh my gosh, I'm going to pray for them and not being angry. Yes, we can be sad. I mean, these, these emotions are normal. Sadness and remorse and those type guilt. I mean, those are also good emotions because a lot of the time that's the Holy Spirit tweaking us because we did something wrong. But if we were filled with the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't be doing anything wrong. Why? Because we would actually have self-control. <laughs> you know, that's the big one. I don't know why they don't put that in the front. Self-control is half of it because we would control our emotions. We would stop. We would pause. We would pray. And that's what we need to remember to do. Stop, pause, pray. What's really happening here? And sometimes it's hard to do when you're in the midst of a conversation with someone and they push a button of yours and you get emotional. Just in your mind, Lord, Holy Spirit, come help me. I've done that, and I've done that with people who really push my buttons, and I'm not always successful. I shared with you last time, a couple weeks ago, when that visitor came, and I was stone-cold sober, but still didn't handle it in the best way. I stood up for myself, but I attacked instead of, you know, that really kind of hurts my feelings, the way you talk to me. That would have been a different way to approach it versus, really? I can't even remember what I said, but I, I snapped right back. Like, don't talk to me that way. Something like that. And that's not loving or gentle. You know, we got to really look at these words and think about how can we ask the Holy Spirit to fill us with these beautiful fruits and ask for that self-control and pray for that self-control. And practice that self-control because nine times out of 10, it's emotions that push us toward not being controlling ourselves, if you will, where we just got to do what we got to do. We have this overwhelming urge or this passion or something to, to do something that we know is wrong, but we do it anyway. And half the time, it's because we have an urge a desire. Something comes over us. And we can pull out the good old deliverance prayers, right? 
In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind the spirit of anger, the spirit of lust, the spirit of pornography, the spirit of alcoholism, the spirit of addiction, the spirit of gluttony, the spirit of laziness, you know, what, whatever it is that is causing you to do what you shouldn't do or not do what you should do. Hence that laziness piece, right? A lot of the time we know we should do something and we're just too lazy to do it. Remember, we're going to be judged for what we do and what we failed to do. That's what we pray in mass, right? Of what I have done and what I have failed to do. Okay. It's not easy, but the more that we recognize and pay attention, live with meaning and purpose, pay attention to what's going on today. What's triggering you? Why is it triggering you? How can you practice gentleness and kindness? How can you be peace in the midst of the madness? I mean, there are times when I will watch the TV and I can't stop myself from talking back to it. And I know that my husband is hearing me talk back to it. And I'm not talking back in the, you know, sweetest, kindest, gentlest tone. I'm just snapping back. Well, blah, 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 blah. It's kind of how I am. (laughs) I'm a joy to live with, I'm sure. And I'm sure that it bothers him. He doesn't say anything. Because guess what? He might have more self-control than I do. But if I'm not reflecting on my life, that just happened this morning. I snapped back at the TV three times. (laughs) I don't watch the news. That's why I snap at the TV because my husband will have it on. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going up to do my podcast. (laughs) It's life. But this is what we have to practice and pay attention to. And the best thing to do is not to think about tomorrow or yesterday. Because sometimes those are the worst emotions because we're worried about how are we, especially now, there's so much stress and upheaval. It is not an easy time to live. So the best that we can do for ourselves and every single person around us is to focus on today and to just live today the best that we can, correct our course if we go off path. Talk to God all day and pay attention to what is going on and what is setting you off. Because nine times out of 10, all we have to do is not go to what sets us off. Sometimes we can't avoid that. Maybe it's someone that you live with who sets you off all the time. Well, that's a nice challenge for you. It's a hard challenge, but it's a good one. And we have to remember, again, the beautiful gifts. And I'm going to read them one more time and let you get on with your day. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let's remember, anything outside of this is not God's spirit. And so let's continue to run to God in prayer, offer ourselves to him, ask the Holy Spirit to fill us with his fruits, take a pause, pray. Maybe half the time it's just shutting your mouth and not saying anything. It is for me. Self-control. We don't always have to be right. We don't always have to speak our mind. We can take that silent moment and pray for that person. You know, pick your battles, in other words. Okay, have a beautiful weekend. I hope that it is filled with love and joy and relaxation. I hope that all of you spend some time doing something that you like. Also, don't forget... Prayer, prayer, prayer. I don't know how you're doing with your prayer, but I'm telling you, the more you dive into God, the more you will obtain and be filled with those beautiful fruits. And that, my friends, is when people see it in you. That is when you know the Holy Spirit is sanctifying you and transforming you before not only your eyes, but everyone's eyes. And that is the best evangelization ever. 
Okay, I love you all. Find something more with God and Mary and have a blessed and inspired day.